this season on The Boys. Mary, move your vix. <coughs> I don't want to murder her in the same house with my kids. <laughs> Season 3 has come to an end and I'm crying harder than Homelander being told he's a disappointment. In this video we'll be going over that final episode and insane theories for Season 4 which was recently greenlit. There's also a boys spin-off show called Varsity which has just started production which stars Arnold Schwarzenegger's son Patrick as a superhero called Golden Boy. So make sure you're subscribed, I'll be covering that show too. Now pour yourself a delicious milk and coke, we've got a lot to cover. It's been a few episodes since we've seen a Becca and Homelander Homelander's son Ryan, who had to change locations of his protective custody after Homelander's hostile takeover of Vought. But as we saw last episode, Victoria Newman gave Homelander his son's location as the two of them continue their tumultuous yet mutually beneficial relationship. Victoria is willing to do whatever it takes to get what she wants. Heck, she betrayed her adoptive father, Stan Edgar, and now is involved in an act of treason to solidify her place as VP. Currently, Victoria and Homelander need Robert Singer to win the presidency. Apparently his poll numbers are high and he'll likely win the presidency. After that, all bets are off. This is likely all a ploy to have Robert Singer win, then they kill him off and have Victoria become the president. A soup president who also has a soup daughter. We never really found out what happened to her after her mother injected her with Compound V. It'll be interesting to see if season 4 follows Victoria on the campaign trail or if they'll just start the season with Robert Singer already as president. Ryan throws a baseball really, really far, a stark contrast to how bad he was at it in Season 2. It's also a visual confirmation that his powers are growing. The scene is also a throwback to 2006's Superman Returns. Remember the one with He Who Must Not Be Named? In which Superman also throws a baseball extremely far. I also love how Ryan is wearing red, white, and blue, Homelander's colors. Speaking of which, look who it is! Homelander's come to repair the relationship with his son, telling him he's not mad for what he did, meaning accidentally kill his own mother at the end of season two. If there's anyone who knows about accidents, it's him. <laughs> Now Grace tries to call for help, but Homelander can sense that. He just wants to tell his son that he loves him no matter what he does, and the two hug. Outside Vought Tower, we have two distinct groups facing off against one another, after the livestream Starlight secretly took of Homelander sparked outrage. There's the pro-Homelander faction known as the Home Teamers, and pro-Starlight faction called Starlighters. Each group is a satire on the current left and right divide in American politics. On the right we have the nationalist pro-gun fascists, one dude even has a swastika, and on the left we have the woke snowflake liberals. If you thought the politics were bad, just wait till next season. With the Attorney General on the way, Ashley has to get rid of Maeve who's locked up in Vought Tower. I love this zebra dress she wears which reflects her character, merely prey in a world of lions that could kill her at any moment. Now Ashley does show a little compassion towards Maeve here, saying that she's sorry. We know from a few episodes ago that Ashley has basically gone along with Homelander because she's scared, but that still doesn't excuse some of the terrible things she's done. I love this cool detail of Maeve's uneaten food in the corner as she gets knocked out by gas, almost as if she were on a hunger strike or concerned her food could be poisoned. Huey's a bit concerned at this black blood coming from his nose, a side effect of the Compound V, which we found last episode, can kill you in about three to five doses, something Butcher fails to mention to him. Huey looks over some pizza Pizza Rolls, a throwback to season one where Huey talked about hating them. How much I f hate pizza rolls. We'll later find out this was because it reminded him of his sad, weak father, who would make them to eat away his feelings about his wife leaving him. Huey hasn't seen his mom in years, and that's another big character that I could see being introduced next season. Butcher's still going with the plan to grab some more Temp V, kill Black Noir, then finish up with Homelander. And even though Soldier Boy just found out Homelander is his son, it's left up in the air what he's going to do here. Will he go through the deal he's made with Huey and Butcher, or 
or will he join his son to make an unstoppable team? While being transported, Maeve is able to escape. That cannot be good news for Ashley. Frenchie's been able to acquire one of the only doses of the nerve agent Novacek, which they found out last episode can knock Soldier Boy out. He's had to pay three Bugattis worth of Starlight's money to acquire it, and considering a new Bugatti can range from about two to twelve million dollars, that's a hell of a lot of money. And mad props to Frenchie for storing it in a Starlight Wish perfume bottle. Frenchie gives a pep talk to Mother's Milk, who is beating himself up over beating up Todd in front of his daughter, no less. But Frenchie tells him we're all a little bit broken and that Janine should see the man he truly is, calling M.M. the best man he's ever known. Frenchie also says this quote, Of all men's miseries, the bitterest is this, to know so much and to have control over nothing. It's a quote from 5th century BC historian Herodotus and really encapsulates M.M., a man who knows a lot, like Homelander is bad, but can't do anything about it. Frenchie tells him to get back on his Lexapro, something we saw him taking a few episodes ago for his depression and anxiety. Maybe this will help him with his chronic tapping, something his daughter notices later on in the episode. Also, shout out to Frenchie for having seen 27 dresses. After Homelander was caught on camera by Starlight, Vought stock has plummeted, and poor Ashley has to tell him they moved Maeve without his permission. Just wait till he finds out she escaped. But this scene is really about Black Noir's return to Vought. He ran away after finding out Soldier Boy had returned, but now armed with the power of Buster Beaver, he's ready to team up with Homelander to take Soldier Boy down. And I love how he spelled Soldier here, hinting that when Soldier Boy bashed part of his brains out in Nicaragua, it affected almost all of his cognitive functions, not just his speech. At this Vought gas station, where you can purchase some smooth A-Train cigarettes, Butcher knocks Huey out. Throughout the season, we've seen how Butcher has equated Huey to his younger brother Lenny, but unlike Lenny, he isn't going to let Huey kill himself. By knocking Huey out, he is preventing him from taking more Temp V and thus saving his life. Bonus points if you caught the Queen Maeve snacks. A-Train's brother is settling into his new life, unable to use his legs, a result of Blue Hawk's attack at the community center. I also like how they even added a stair lift outside his home. A-Train has started his recovery after his heart was replaced with Blue Hawk's. Can I get a what what? Now he only needs a cane, and he tells his brother he'll soon get everything back, including his races and endorsements. But at what cost? He killed Blue Hawk. Even though he was doing this for his brother, it's not what his brother wanted. This was not justice for Nathan, it was revenge. He wanted his kids to see Blue Hawk's mugshot on the TV instead of his brother murder him. Nathan says, Don't say you did that for me. You've only ever been about yourself. Which echoes what Ashley said a few episodes ago. You did not give a shit about all the collateral you caused then. Now all of a sudden you care? Because it happened to you? Nathan never wants to see his brother again. Starlight picks up Huey. The last time they saw each other, they didn't leave on good terms. <laughs> Huey teleported her against her will from Herogasm in an attempt to save her from Soldier Boy. He apologizes to her, telling a story about how he thought his father was weak, but realizing sometimes strength comes simply by being there for those you love. Well, I guess we found Quentin Tarantino's favorite episode of the season. Maeve has found refuge at Mother's Milks as Huey and Starlight arrive. Frenchie has drowned himself in drugs, which Kimiko doesn't take too kindly to. Ever since the altercation with little Nina, he's needed something to cope with the pain that maybe she was right. The only thing that changes in his life is who holds the chain around his neck. And just like Frenchie gave Kimiko a pep talk a few episodes ago, Kimiko returns the favor, telling him the past is not who we are. This talk seems to work, as we'll later see Frenchie sticking up for himself in front of Butcher. She calls him Moncour, which means my heart. Huey tells Maeve that Soldier Boy is Homelander's father, while Starlight tries contacting Vaughn to get them to evacuate the tower. The team seems hell-bent on taking down Homelander and Soldier Boy, and Huey makes an impassioned plea that they save Butcher. We save everyone, even if they don't deserve it. At the boys' HQ, Butcher goes over the Vought Tower schematics. He also ignores calls from Grace Mallory, who undoubtedly would be warning him that Homelander took his son. But it's Soldier Boy's story about his childhood that gives us the biggest insight into why he'll eventually turn his back on his son and decide not to side with him. His father was a rich steel mill owner, and no matter what he did, Soldier Boy was nothing but a disappointment to his father. Even when he enrolled in the Compound V experiments and became the world's strongest man, his his father told him a real man wouldn't have taken a shortcut. 
No matter what he did, he'd never be able to earn his father's love. He'd be nothing but a disappointment. And the irony of the situation is that Soldier Boy becomes just like his father, later telling Homelander that he is weak and nothing but a disappointment. Also, for all you horn dogs out there, this is Jane Wyman, the actress Soldier Boy made sweet, passionate love to at the coat check. She'd go on to marry Ronald Reagan. Soldier Boy tells Butcher that he always wanted kids, and actually believes he might have a few running around somewhere out there. But I don't think the writers would bring in a Homelander brother, at least till about season 7. Unlikely, but I'll throw it out there anyway, we never really saw any fallout from Maeve and Butcher's one night stand. With Maeve leaving at the end of the season, I doubt we'll see any Butcher babies. Noir sharpens his blades, something pretty meaningless since they wouldn't be able to penetrate Soldier Boy's skin. Homelander tells him that Soldier Boy is his father, but Noir already knew this. For Homelander, this is a betrayal. After all, Homelander told Noir he was the only person he could trust. Seriously, you're the only one I can count on. And he's kept this secret from him all these years. This betrayal ends in Homelander killing Noir, or at least that's what it seems like as we see Buster Beaver fade away from his helmet. Love the addition of the Robert Singer billboard in the back here. Later in the episode, they'll even add a Remembering Maeve one. Butcher looks over a vial of Temp V, knowing it will likely kill him, as they're interrupted by Huey, Maeve, Starlight, M.M., Frenchie, and Kimiko looking for Soldier Boy. They want to stop him before he goes into Vought Tower and blows the place up, something that could result in hundreds dying. But it's Maeve here that does something unexpected. She chucks the Nova Chalk and breaks M.M.'s gun, ultimately siding with Butcher. Homelander has to die, even if it means some residual casualties at Vought. I really thought that deep down you were a hero. Well, you were wrong. Maeve will actually end up sacrificing herself, becoming a hero at the end of the episode. Starlight, Huey, Kimiko, Frenchie, and M.M. are locked in the safe, and I love this Spot the Villain propaganda poster here where the boys have pointed arrows at Homelander. Butcher shuts off the power, reminding us that Starlight gets her power from nearby light sources, something that we'll see play out later in the episode. A-Train, Ashley, and The Deep listen to the audio recording of Starlight pleading that the tower be evacuated, a recording The Deep got from the crime lab which he's now calling Angelfish. Homelander shows them he's killed Noir, essentially telling them that this is what happens to those who keep secrets. He thought that one day his team at Vought would become his family, but now he's stuck with these guys, disappointed in them. The Deep, being the bootlicker he is, asks if there's anything he can do. Homelander will whisper something in his ear, which the Deep thinks is treason. This is Homelander asking he kill Senator Lamar Bishop, paving the way for Victoria Newman to take over his role as Robert Singer's VP. We also learn why Ashley still has this great set of hair after watching her lose it for three straight seasons. It's a wig. Homelander also digs into A-Train, asking him how he could, quote, kill one of their own. This is the second time in the season where Homelander has brought up this idea of soups being different than humans. Vicky. I'm glad you chose your own kind. With Victoria Newman potentially one step away from the presidency, I wonder if Homelander is setting up for the eventual takeover of humanity by soups. Kimiko and Starlight easily break out of the vault, and they devise a plan to break into Vought Tower. Frenchie will use the lab there to concoct his own version of the neurotoxin that can bring down Soldier Boy. Remember, he's a chemist, and we saw him MacGyver things together at the Sage Grove Center in Season 2. As they leave, Huey eyes a leftover vial of Temp V. He'll later have to decide if he'll take it to save Starlight's life. More on that in a bit. As Homelander watches archive footage of his father liberating a concentration camp, one which was probably staged or that Soldier Boy just showed up after it was already liberated, he's interrupted by Maeve, Butcher, and Soldier Boy himself. I love how there's these posters for Vought and Friends, a play on Fox and Friends, as well as the Stephanie Yakage Report, a play on Special Report with Brett Bayer, or simply Fox Report with John Scott. Homelander says that Butcher has gone scorched earth, a callback to their meeting in episode one where both sides would do whatever it takes to bring the other down. But the episode has been building up to this point on whether or not Soldier Boy will side with his son or side with Butcher. And Homelander makes things even more difficult by bringing out Ryan, telling Soldier Boy that this is his grandson and that they can finally be a family. But Soldier Boy ends up calling his son weak and a disappointment, leading to a battle with Ryan caught in the middle. Maeve, Butcher, and Soldier Boy hold Homelander as Soldier Boy charges his power that would ultimately make Homelander powerless. But just as Homelander is about to be destroyed, Ryan laser eyes Soldier Boy. And Soldier Boy is like. <laughs> 
Soldier Boy gets the upper hand, ready to kill both Homelander and Ryan in one go. This is where Butcher has to make a decision. Does he let Soldier Boy go through with this, or does he stop him, saving Ryan but also letting Homelander live? As he'll later tell Soldier Boy, he made a promise to Becca in Season 2. You promised me you keep it safe. Maeve takes on Homelander while Soldier Boy finishes off Butcher, but is saved in the nick of time by Starlight and M.M. In the lab, Kimiko protects Frenchie as he puts together the necessary ingredients to create the nerve gas. She listens to Maniac from the Footloose soundtrack, the movie that was playing in the background when Starlight patched Kimiko up. Ashley tells her assistant, also Ashley, seriously that's her name in the credits, that the helicopter is reserved for SVPs and higher. Man, I love this character so much, but she's such a... Maeve actually makes Homelander bleed here, but in the process gets her eye gouged. We'll later see her bandaged up, and it looks like she'll never have use of that eye again. Although he gets shot in the leg, Frenchie finishes the nerve agent, which he gives to Kimiko. She'll get tossed aside like a ragdoll, dropping the canister on the ground. While Butcher fights Soldier Boy, he actually manages to crack his shield, which I thought was pretty badass. But Soldier Boy manages to gain the upper hand yet again, and it looks as though he's about to finish off Starlight. Huey, who has barricaded himself, in the control room has to make a decision whether or not to take the temp V to save her, but he realizes that he can boost the power of the stage lights to make Starlight even more powerful. This entire season, he's been under the mentality that he has to be strong to save her, so by casting aside the temp V, he's actually going against this. He doesn't have to save her, he has to be there for her, just like his father, who we saw as weak, showed strength by always being there for him. By working together and being there for her, Starlight is able to harness her powers and actually levitate, blasting Soldier Boy away, giving M.M. the chance to knock Soldier Boy out with the gas. He says, this is for my family. Remember that Soldier Boy had killed his grandfather when he was just a boy, a story that was covered up by Vought to make Soldier Boy look like a hero. Soldier Boy decides to blow himself and everyone up. He won't, quote, go back inside that box, referring to the container he was put in while in Russia. But it's Maeve here who saves the day, sacrificing herself by tackling him outside the tower, and the two of them blow up in midair. As the dust settles, Butcher asks if Ryan is okay, but the damage is done, both to Vought Tower and their relationship. He just wants to leave with his dad, Homelander. Butcher wipes away more of that black blood and collapses, later waking up in a hospital where we see him looking at his pendant of St. Christopher. This was something he gave to Ryan as a gift at the end of Season 2. It would later be tossed onto the ground after Butcher was terribly mean to him. The most famous story of this St. Christopher depicts him carrying a child across a river River, a child who would then reveal himself to be Christ. Is Butcher St. Christopher and Ryan this Christ-like child? It hasn't taken long for Vought to spin the terror attack at Vought Tower as the work of Soldier Boy who was radicalized by the Russians. Although the Russians have denied any such involvement as we can see here on the news ticker. Maeve memorials have sprung up, but as we'll soon see, Ashley has brought security footage from Annika that shows her that Maeve survived. Will Ashley keep this from Homelander? And judging by her saying, I I'm sorry to Maeve at the beginning of the episode, I'm inclined to think yes. Let Maeve live her life of secrecy, but this also means Ashley is keeping a secret, and we know what Homelander does to those who keep secrets. We find out that Maeve has lost her powers, similar to how Kimiko lost hers while blasted by Soldier Boy at the end of episode 4. She's back with her ex-girlfriend Elena, who she left in order to protect her from Homelander, but with a new lease on life and Homelander believing her to be dead, Maeve can finally get back to her. Maeve also recalls the first time that she met Starlight, crying after she was assaulted by the Deep. We actually saw this scene in Season 1, Episode 1. Maeve says she'll go somewhere where Homelander can't find her, so it's a big question mark whether or not the writers decide to continue her story or have this be her exit out. Butcher's use of Temp V has finally caught up to him, with the doctor saying he has about 18 months to live, 12 of those functionally, the other 6 he'll likely be bedridden. M.M. gives his daughter something to be proud about, showing her an album of his dad and grandfather telling her that superheroes aren't always good. Janine stops him from his anxious tapping, calling him her hero. The end is a montage of different characters set to Elton John's Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, which is all about a man turning away from the fame, glitz, and glamour towards a more simple life. This is indicative of Starlight, who throws away her costume, leaving her life of fame to join the boys. She says it was never the costume that gave her power, that always came from within. Grace Mallory oversees 
Soldier Boy being put away. It's interesting that they haven't killed him here, always leaving the door open for Soldier Boy to make a return in future seasons. The Deep eats his feelings watching Cassandra on a Vought Morning program promoting her new book, In Too Deep, My Journey to Freedom, a play off the Deep's book, Deeper and Deeper. Now, I don't think this is the last we've seen of Cassandra. On the Audible Deeper and Deeper podcast, the Deep talks about Cassandra taking hormones, perhaps for having a baby. I mean, that many hormones is never a good thing, trust me. Cassandra just turned the corner on her whole... <laughs> we, we don't, we don't. <laughs> we did see him finish with her, so if she did come back, I imagined it would be with child. With the boys now running under a democracy, Butcher arrives sipping from a Dawn of the Seven cup. Wonder if he got that from Soldier Boy. But it's the news flash that grips everyone's attention. Senator Lamar Bishop's death was deemed an accident, and Victoria Newman has been announced as Robert Singer's new running mate. So it looks like season four's villains will include, among others, Victoria, Homelander, and Ryan. On the news ticker, we see that the Ritz Carlton Hotel threatens to sue Ted Cruz over unpaid pornography pay per view charges. Which may be a nod to when the senator's official Twitter account retweeted an actual adult video back in 2017. There's another ticker headline which states Florida Governor Ron DeSantis will ban, quote, woke starlight snowflake teachers, which may be a nod to the pushback from Florida teachers and the don't say gay bill. At a pro-Homelander rally, his home teamers have toppled this statue of Soldier Boy, which once stood outside Vought Square. The reporting here is done by NNC, which is just CNN spelled backwards, so you can see why these guys are pissed off at the mainstream media. Part of Homelander supporters are Storm Chasers, followers of Stormfront who are basically neo-Nazis. Nazis. There's one guy who's even dressed up as the QAnon shaman who took part in the January 6th riot at the Capitol. Homelander introduces everyone to his son, except everyone isn't too pleased. Hold on, computer? Enhance. Is that an A-Train energy drink? Homelander is so pissed that he zaps this starlighter in front of everyone. And it's Todd who's the first one to clap and cheer, which gets the rest of the crowd going. This is a play on Donald Trump's comment from 2016, where he said he could shoot someone in the middle of Fifth Avenue and not lose any votes. Where I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose any voters, okay? It's like incredible. Perhaps the scariest thing here is Ryan's face at the end, which turns into this slight smile, like he's proud out of his dad for what he just did. This is something I'm really looking forward to in season four, how this new father-son dynamic plays out. I almost get invincible vibes where Omni-Man trains his son. So it looks like the big threat of season four will be the boys having to stop Victoria Newman. However, there are multiple loose threads the show can pick up on. Like, where is Stan Edgar? He kind of dipped after being ousted from Vought, but will he make another appearance? Who is Homelander's mom? I've theorized that it could be Stormfront who went missing in the set. 70s, she would have been the perfect candidate to impregnate with Soldier Boy's seed to create one of the strongest soups imaginable. What about little Nina? She hasn't really faced any consequences for her almost killing Frenchie, Kimiko, and Sherry. And what's up with Victoria Newman's daughter? She was injected with that compound V. It would be quite the scandal if the public found out she gave her own daughter this. Not to mention that she's that head-popping soup herself. What will happen to the boys who operated under the Federal Bureau of Superhuman Affairs? Will Victoria Victoria Newman disband them. Whatever's in store for us, I'm totally stoked. The Boys has been one of my favorite shows of 2022, and that spin-off show can't come fast enough. But what did you think of season three, and what do you think will happen in season four? Thanks for sticking with me through all these episodes. I hope you'll consider liking and subscribing. For more bad takes, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time, remember, you'll be in the sweet embrace of <laughs> <laughs>